So I think it's pretty easy to feel you lack fulfillment in life when you feel like you're just doing the same old stuff day in, day out. Like life when you live it and you've got a job at least and there's no kind of clear next step in your journey as I am currently finding, it's kind of scary. What is next? Where do I go from here? Or is my life now for the next 30 to 50 years just day in, day out, doing work, trying to progress in my career somewhat, doing more or less the same stuff each and every day? When I look at my life, it kind of falls into this three-part narrative. I had childhood and studying and this kind of world where everything was laid out before you, you knew what your next step was. Get to this point where the middle of my kind of narrative is a 30 to 50 year period of work and doing similar things. Obviously there's progression, but there's no grand change or evolution that is immediately obvious, at least when you look in from the outside. And I think that uncertainty of that path is difficult uh, and I'm definitely finding that. And the third part of the narrative is then like getting old, I guess, and having like more time again to do the stuff you want to. And you get to that point in your life and it's like, yeah, okay, like I've worked all this time. So I've achieved the end destination of being retired and having money and being able to provided like I don't have crippling arthritis in my knees, go and do some traveling. But surely like that cannot be a destination that we're focused on at this age. We surely need to find fulfillment in our day-to-day -day lives every single day even in this middle section of our story. And these were exactly the thoughts that I was having just a couple of weeks ago, walking along the train platform on my way home around 11.30 p.m., having worked a really long couple of weeks and thinking, you know, like, what am I doing? And I was listening at the time to an audiobook, Grace Beverly's Working Hard, Hardly Working, and she mentioned this idea of self-actualization. And this idea was first put out there into the world by Abraham Maslow, the American psychologist who is famous for Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which he introduced in his 1943 paper, A Theory of Human Motivation. So self-actualization sits right at the very peak of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So we need to have food and water, then we need to have safety, then we need to have love and relationships. Then we need to make sure that we feel a sense of esteem and pride in our work, and we need to make sure that we feel valued in the community in which we exist. And then right at the very top, we can finally pursue a sense of fulfillment in everything that we do. And that bit is a self-actualization bit. The problem that Grace talks about in her book with this idea of the hierarchy of needs though, is that it places self-actualization, this feeling of fulfillment, this feeling of really being proud of everything that we're doing and wanting to do the very best and feeling like we're achieving kind of big things it's right at the top, it's right at the end destination once we've done all of these other things in our life. And that means that it does feel exactly like that, like a destination to be reached, like we will somehow feel fulfillment once we have done all of these things, once we have achieved our goals, once we have got to a place, once we've got literally to the summit of the mountain that we're all climbing. And that takes away from our ability to self-actualize on a daily basis to find fulfillment in the everyday. So I want to share with you the four habits that I've really been building over the last year. And I hope that these four habits will help you build into your daily life a sense that you are actively for yourself creating fulfillment, creating self-actualization as part of the journey rather than conceiving of it as the end destination, the pinnacle at the top of the mountain at the end of your journey. So my first habit is to make self-actualization a daily action. It's something that you can do and practically that means that each and every morning I have so far this year been starting my day either on my commute to work or when I'm walking to the gym or when I'm on my morning stroll by thinking actively about places that I'm going to find fulfillment in my day and things that I'm going to do that are going to bring me not only joy but move me closer to the goals that I've set for this year. The things that I at the end of the day then will be able to reflect back on and feel like, yes, I did that and I feel really good about where I'm going in that part of my life. So to give you an example, at work, I absolutely love having the opportunity to talk to more senior people and share my ideas and really feel like I'm contributing. So I have actively been trying to seek out opportunities where I can really add value to them. And on one of the matters I've been working on, 
every time there has been a point that I've been asked to look into and they've been like, okay, can you just research this? I've actively made an effort to then call the associate afterwards once I've sent my kind of finding email just saying, like, let me just talk you through this. And I've built up a relationship with this person. I'm not taking their time. They respect me and know now that I'm able to add value. And that's because I really enjoy talking through things, adding value and feeling like I'm really involved. It would be so easy for me not to do that, to feel like, oh, that'll come later in my career. I'll find that sense of fulfillment in three years time when I'm more senior. But fundamentally, I can create that for myself now. It's something I find fulfilling. Two important points. You do not have to find every or even the majority of the things you do in your day-to-day -day life fulfilling in order to be self-actualizing. Everyone, including Grace Beverly, who's a CEO of multiple successful companies, including me who makes videos and does all this like seemingly cool stuff. Like there is so much rubbish that comes with running a business or being an influencer or doing a job or being a student. Like everything has bad elements and you don't have to love all of them. But what you do have to do is actively seek out ways in your daily life to build in the things that you love doing. You're never too early in your career or in your life to be offering to do the things you are really good at and really enjoy doing and find fulfillment doing. So if you love research, offer to everyone in your department to do research for them. If you love personal interaction, offer to take call notes, like literally send out an email to everyone you've worked with saying, if you ever have a call and need someone to take a call note, I'm more than happy to do it. So you can get involved in that interpersonal interaction and potentially get invited to meetings if you do a good job. Realize that it is up to you and you alone to start creating the moments for yourself when you are doing what you like doing most. And ultimately, it's only up to you to make sure that you're realizing your potential and finding that fulfillment. And it doesn't just have to be at work. If you really love helping people, then volunteer at the weekend. If you love talking or sharing information, teaching, which I personally absolutely love. I have chosen to make these videos. You could do exactly the same. And the second point is if you feel like you're thinking, yeah, but I don't know what I enjoy doing. Like I don't really have any hobbies. I don't really have anything that I really enjoy. Ask yourself two questions. The first one is what would I spend my time doing if money were not an option? And you might think like, oh yeah, I go and lie on a beach for the rest of my life doing nothing. That is not true. You would get bored. Like what would you actually choose to do? And then on top of that, I think you can also ask the question, what are the activities that when you're doing them, you find you lose yourself, you don't feel the need to eat or sleep, you just kind of get into this rhythm and once you're going, you don't stop. Think about those two questions. What are the answers and what activities do you enjoy doing? And then find ways to do those activities. It doesn't matter in what context really, it just matters that you're doing those things that you're good at and that you find you lose yourself in. Next up, I think it's absolutely crucial that we all get into a habit of finding fulfillment in multiple areas of our lives. I think we tend to focus excessively on the idea of a single purpose, the idea that you have to find your passion, you have to find the one thing that you really love and that will bring you fulfillment. Scrap that. Realize that you can find fulfillment in being an exceptional parent or brother or friend, in talking to your friend when they're in a dark place and, and you're really helping them and making them feel better. Find fulfillment in that. That is a fulfilling thing and you should realize that. Or if you're watching TV with your partner, think, yeah, I'm really happy right now doing nothing. I'm just loving Drive to Survive, by the way, the show that Beth and I are currently watching. So good, definitely gonna be an F1 fan after it. Anyway, <laughs> you can find genuine fulfillment in feeling like, huh, I'm really happy right now. It's not like you have to find a single passion and that's the only source of fulfillment you can have. Interpersonal relationships can provide you with fulfillment, as can your professional life, as can hobbies outside of your professional life, as can volunteering. There's so many different things that people can prioritize and want to be good at and once you realize that and stop attaching your entire self-worth and entire sense of fulfillment to professional fulfillment i think that's a hugely liberating thing and something that over the last 24 months has been a huge focus for me and it has made me so much happier. So remember, very, very few people find their life's fulfillment from one single passion. Instead, most people find many things that they think are really important to them over the course of their lives and then they actively seek to feel fulfilled in doing those things. Third is to build your circle of positive influence. And that means thinking on a daily basis about 
the people that you associate with, disassociating from the negative, basically moaners who do nothing but find problems in their lives and don't try to solve them. And then at the same time, trying to build up positive influences that you are consuming in the media. I think it's almost impossible to feel fulfilled where when you are in a team that is focused on negatives, that does not do much to try to solve its problems. No one in the team is finding fulfillment in anything they're doing because they're just constantly moaning about everything that is wrong. It's so hard then for you to break the mold and to be positive and to feel optimistic about those things. So I think build that two track strategy as a habit really in your daily life thinking, is this person a drain on my energy and just interact less with that person. It doesn't mean you have to break up with them and say, I never want to speak to you again. Just talk to them less, spend less time with that person. And on the flip side, spend time with positive people, with people who are also pursuing a sense of fulfillment, who find problems and want to solve them. And second, everyone pretty much has access to videos on YouTube, hopefully mine, podcasts, audio books, reading, papers. Everything that we're consuming is a choice as to how we see the world. Find things that in your life give you positive influence, and motivation to find fulfillment. And my fourth and final habit is to be patient. I have in the past made myself feel deeply unfulfilled because I generally focus on relatively short periods of time. I'll have a bad week or a bad month at work because I'll be working doing something that isn't hugely fulfilling, that might be, you know, a bit of a dull task, frankly. And I'll then focus on that having been really busy and just decide that, you know, I'm completely unfulfilled by life and <laughs> I really hate it. And then like two weeks later, I feel so much happier and better with things and suddenly start to feel really fulfilled because I'm doing more interesting things at work and I'm doing stuff outside of work. I think being patient and having the kind of realization that actually your career is a very long time. This middle piece of the narrative is actually relatively longer than we often feel like it is. And I think just being patient, being able in those kind of tough times to say, it's okay, like I will get back to finding things that are fulfilling, even if right now I'm not hugely fulfilled, is hugely powerful. Generally at the start, we're not that good at things and it's difficult to find fulfillment when, you know, you're working really hard on something and not seeing results. But as you progress, if you are patient and you stick, for example, with this YouTube channel, you know, if after five videos I had thought, I have no one watching them, I found this horrendously hard, I've had to put in tons of work, got no results. Yeah, I've been learning stuff, but I've been so focused on like trying to improve and putting pressure on myself, I haven't really enjoyed it. Actually, it took patience and it took 20 or 30 videos for me to really find my flow. And still at times I find it difficult, but I think what I'm trying to say is, Patience is essential, I think, to find fulfillment in things where, at times, things won't be fulfilling and you need to not get yourself too down about that, it's okay. And second, there may be opportunities to find fulfillment in things that initially you find unfulfilling. If you fundamentally dislike what you're doing or something that's in your life, you should stop it. Life is too short. But you absolutely should, first of all, give it a good chance because you never know. Some of the things that are least fulfilling to start with may ultimately end up being extremely fulfilling. So thanks so much. Please do let me know what you thought of this down in the comments. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. And if you did like it, you're probably also going to like my video that I made at the start of 2022 about how to change your life in a year, how to make your life what you want it to be, set really ambitious goals, build really positive habits and crush it. I look forward to speaking to you again very, very soon.